Hi, it's David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonian back with another video blog. It's the turn of the month from March to April, but things are a bit different, are they? Let's face it. So let's have a look after the new titles that are in Ultra HD. Hi there, well it's uh, very good to see you again. Um, I'm filming this, I've got a new camera. I'm filming now in uh, Ultra HD so uh, we can really see some detail. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not really, but we'll see how it goes. Turn of, uh, turn of the month, March to April, but the big thing of course has happened. Um, we, everybody knows that I was going away on holiday. We timed our holiday very well actually. Um, because the first two weeks of March were generally okay. We returned and then virtually sort of lockdown started more or less after we returned. Um, so a lot of people have got a bit of time on their hands or are working from home. Um, so I'm hopefully going to be doing a few more videos. I mean, I would normally do that anyway because it's that time of year now where things are beginning to develop. Um, so we can have a look at what's going on in my greenhouse here and hopefully give you lots of tips to keep you going through the spring and the early part of summer to see how we go. Now one thing I do need to mention that as at this stage, I'm filming this on uh, Monday the 30th of March, um, the annual show is still sort of on but realistically most things in June now have been cancelled. Uh, certainly in the UK, and well, we're, we're sort of seeing perhaps how it goes over the next week or two with regard to any announcements that may be made uh, from the government to see perhaps how we plan. But um, as at sort of at the moment, we are planning for it to go ahead. But if anything changes over the next few weeks, I'm sure I will let you know. Now, the main thing, of course, to report is that over the last couple of weeks, virtually since we returned from our holidays, uh, the weather has actually been very dry. We've last two weeks we've hardly had any rain. Last week it was actually very warm and sunny, and that in itself um, is quite unusual because it, we've certainly had the driest period of weather that we've had in the UK probably since last summer, uh, because we had a very wet autumn, we had a very wet winter. And so um, it's great, been great to get the greenhouse open, the humidity levels have really dropped um, and everything now has really begun to grow uh, with the fact of course that we had a lot of sunshine in the last week. Uh, today is actually probably the cloudiest day we've had really for well over a week so um, it's good to be able to close up uh, and just do this video. Everything really now with the stronger sunshine has been really begun to green up. Uh, everything is now really beginning to grow away. But one of the things with clear days uh, and clear nights is that it means that we are having very chilly nights. So the heater is on virtually every night. I've had the heater on virtually non-stop now for the last sort of 10 days or so. Um, so we're getting chilly nights and we're getting all of the things that happen to pelagoniums in a greenhouse where you get warmer days uh, but chilly nights and it's the old reddening of the leaves. Uh, a younger plant here. Just have a look at this one. This is quite sort of typical uh, where we get the, the, the reddening of the leaves. Just to make sure it's focusing. Uh, where you get this reddening of the leaves. Uh, this is just stress, a little bit of stress for the plant because it's wanting to grow away faster with the uh, warmer days. But the, the cooler nights mean that it's, uh, it's a bit of a problem. Now, when you get a few of them, you can just take one or two off. These will never recolor to green. So you need to just snap them off. If you haven't got many, you can do, uh, do them all in one hit. If you've got a lot of them, um, just make sure that you, know, you don't overdo it because you really do not want to strip the plant of all its uh, sort of growth. So I'll take that two off. I've left one on there uh, and that's fine. Um, uh, all of the new green growth will grow through once you know once the uniformity of the temperatures balance off. 
Now this problem generally tends to happen more frequently on dwarf zonals uh, and stellars. Although strangely my stellars don't seem to have been quite so bad this year. Here's a slightly bigger plant. Uh, this has got a couple of the reddening leaves off. And because it's quite big, and there's quite a bit of density to it, quite a lot number of ordinary leaves on it, I'm just going to take all three of those off. It's not going to hurt the plant at all. Um, uh, but the main thing is you don't want the plant to expend a lot of energy in, um, in keeping these reddened leaves sort of going, if you like. So there's three. I've got rid of all of those now. There's another one tucked away there. And that's it on that plant for now. Oh, another one there just stinging up. So as there's not too many, I've been able to get those all off of that plant. Uh, but it, all it is, a little bit of stress on the plant. Um, so um, it's quite normal this time of year when you get this wide variation of temperatures. Now regals as well can suffer from it to a lesser extent, but you do get this discoloration of the leaves here. A little bit of red blotchiness coming on this one, and that's exactly the same issue. You can see all this new fresh growth at the top is um, is all nice and green but we've got a couple of leaves that are just beginning to get develop a little bit of red on so i will strip those off uh just nip them out and just snap them off of the base and there we are there's uh there's the example of how it happens on reg regals it tends to be a bit more mottled um you don't get that sort of vast zone of uh, red that you do on the zonals uh, but it's exactly the same thing it's just a little bit of stress um, but the plants won't come to too much harm just make sure that you you know they don't get sort of frost which we can still get this time of year happens in various forms uh, if i grab this regal here uh, we got a few sort of really untidy leaves on this one so just break them off um, that one sort of started to die back. So, you know, these are the sort of things uh, that we can just strip off. And I'll probably go over that plant uh, just a little later and strip off all of the, uh, the leaves that are just looking a bit mottled and a little bit uh, discoloured. But there's lots and lots of fresh growth coming through on there. So that plant will be fine. One thing I have been doing is I've been potting on a lot of my smaller plants. Um, maybe in the sort of vagueish hope that one or two of them might grow, go, um, grow through for the shows. You never know. So I've got them into a standard, for a dwarf, a standard four and a half or 12 centimetre pot. Um, that may grow okay, but it's more likely to be a plant for next year. But uh, we'll see how it goes. As I say, there's still a bit of debate over how many shows we're going to be having in June. So it may be that we'll have to have a sort of uh, a virtual show in here and I'll be able to show you everything that I've got. Now, if anybody looked at my uh, Instagram page the other day, um, I have potted on a, a couple of this variegated form of Mr. Wren. Uh, now, I've got a, a larger plant here. I'll plop that down. This larger, you may remember I was trying to train up um, this version of the variegated form of Mr. Wren. Now, it's it's been pretty slow. I think the problem with it is that variegated forms of plants do not grow too much in the winter. And if you overwater them, they really can suffer. Uh, and I think this one got overwatered during the winter. It hasn't grown much at all. Now, my smaller versions of the same plant uh, seem to be growing quite strongly. So I've potted them up with a vague hope that I'm going to start to train these as well. So they're all a little bit in competition with each other. That one's actually got a bloom on that I'm actually going to keep so that we can show you um, the gorgeous form of, uh, of the Mr. Wren bloom, uh, which is the same on the, on the standard version and this variegated form. Um, I should say this was found on a Norwegian nursery. But it's got a long uh, Norwegian name uh, that I can't even pronounce, so I still tend to call it the variegated form of Mr. Wren. But it's very strong growing. It's still got the, uh, the strength, but I do find that it retains the colour form very well in the bloom. 
which I find the standard version, version of Mr. Wren doesn't do. I find that mine's the green leaf version, the, uh, the red and white bloom tends to uh, fall back to the red. Uh, but the variegated form I find very, very stable in the bloom. And you get the gorgeous bloom coming through. And the variegation as well is always remains uh, very uniform. Now another thing that I've done, I've potted on a number of the, uh, the younger Mrs. May lasts, which is a variegated uh, bicolour um, Stella. Um, always does very well for me in the shows. I've potted a number of these on. The seeds have grown relatively well. Um, now, I will have to see how they go. I've just got them up to a four and a half inch pot. No idea whether they will grow on fast enough to be in any sort of potential show regime because they're still quite young. So they're, they're, they haven't really got a proper branch network. Now, quickly bashing through, Here's another issue that you can get um, with the, uh, the discoloration of the leaf due to stress. Simpson's got the yellow on. So um, you don't only get red, you also get yellowing of the leaves. Again, I'm just going to break these off, strip them off. Won't hurt the plant. There's plenty of green leaves on it, so uh, no issue at all. All this discoloration is just through stress of the different temperatures that we're getting at this time of year that you get in the spring. Now I've also stripped back uh, a couple of regal standards. Um, I actually had some quite relatively straight young regals and I stripped off all the side growth and I'm hopefully going to get some, uh, some standards going of these young regals. They are very small at the moment um, so I'll let them grow on before I start sticking them and straighten them on. Um, now the, the Stellas that we've got, these I think too have suffered a little bit from overwatering. Uh, we've got a nice red leaf on that one which I'll just take off. Uh, but they're beginning a long last to grow. They've been very slow off the mark. Stellas do can sometimes be a bit slow to grow in the spring, uh, but we'll uh, have to see how they go. Uh, they're growing now away. I may give them a little stop because I'm almost certain that they're not going to be any good for shows this year. Okay, so that's just about it from me for today. Um, I hope to do a lot more videos now in the coming months, especially as I know I've had requests from people to do a few more now, and certainly as the spring and the early summer progresses and the plants grow, um, I'll do a few more. Um, maybe in the next week I'll do another one where I'll go around my plants. I haven't done a great deal of plant concentration today because there was a lot to catch up on, um, so I'll, we'll have a look around my greenhouse perhaps in the next week or so. Um, but in the meantime, take care of yourself, obviously, at this um, slightly bizarre time that we're uh, in at the moment. And in the meantime, stay safe, and I'll uh, see you again very soon. Bye for now. Please subscribe to this channel, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can follow Mr. Pelagonium on both Twitter and Instagram under Mr. Pelagonium, and you can follow the Pelagonium and Geranium Society on Facebook. Or you can visit the PAGS website at thepags.org.uk.